What's up guys, this is Darkson, back with some more Heart of the Swarm StarCraft 2 action. Uh, saying the name out of order is absolutely the order of the day, that's that's uh, that's how I roll. Anyway guys, uh, let's get into this. Today's game is going to be played by Nave, the Zerg in the top right hand corner, and down at the bottom left is going to be MacLovin. MacLovin, the Terran, is going to be tearing it up in the night. Uh, man, that's that's such an old joke. I actually, I don't think I can make that successful anymore. Anyway, guys, let me, let me tell you something about Nave. Um, Nave is an old friend of mine who used to play Counter-Strike Source, back when Counter-Strike Source was still a thing. And he was really good at that. I think he was one of the country's best at the time. Um, as well as, uh, he also played some... He also played some Warcraft... World of Warcraft, there we go, that's what he played. And he played a, a, a rogue, and he was really good at that as well. He, uh, he made quite a name for himself as a, as, a, as a gladiator. Back when that was still a thing, and there was still balance in World of Warcraft. Unfortunately, um, it's no longer a thing, but that doesn't stop him from playing games. And right now, he is playing StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm, and he's getting really good at it, guys. I'm really, I'm really looking out for uh, for some of his future games i think he might be a very successful player in the future and i think he might be an interesting person to watch as uh, as the progression of uh, of starcraft 2 as a spectator sport in south africa progresses and that may be interesting right now he's going to be moving out and doing some damage to this scv forcing them off of this building which is going to slow down the production there for a bit and he does get one back in there um, and he is going to be moving out you can see that his scouting angles are almost perfect over here the uh, the turning angles means that he's almost never going to be hit by this SCV, which is going to be perfect for him. All the while he's moving out his overlord so that he can spot the areas that he wants to. He's spotting this area for any um, any sort of harassment movement so that he can just preemptively see that. Unfortunately, um, for McLovin, he's not going to be able to do any sort of sneaky moves. Nave is going to be very sneaky over here, moving right through the mineral line. Always a dangerous move. But, uh, but Zerg don't care. Zerg does whatever Zerg wants to. And he is going to be dropping down a extractor on this, uh, on this gas. What are these things called? Vespine Geyser. That's exactly what they're called. And, uh, and this SCV is going to be trying to do some damage to that. Very, uh, pointless at this point. Um, he's unable to do that, but he does grab an expansion, so it doesn't prevent his uh, his micro. He does have a marine that's going to be trying to do some damage to it and maybe forcing it to uh, forcing it to die a little bit earlier, which is going to be interesting. Um, I don't think it really matters to Nave at this point. I think he let it finish because he doesn't really care about that 35 minerals, um, and he's going to allow that to uh, allow that to die. This does prevent him from getting the, the early gas. He does uh, manage to get the other one on the other side, but especially for Terran, who love getting double gas early early on in the game, um, that's going to be a bit of a hindrance. It's going to reduce it by a couple of minutes. And there we go. Uh, Nave is going for his expansion early as well. Excuse me, guys. Let me just catch my breath. I am so tired. I've been costing games all day, trying to practice getting ready for this game. And uh, and there we go. Let's <laughs> there we go. Oh, all right, I'm ready to cast some uh, some decent action because this is going to be such an action-packed game I think it's going to be an interesting game to watch Especially because Nave always brings the noise um, He's going to be moving out with a couple of zerglings over here trying to move around to see what he can see uh, This this bunker is going to be full of uh, full of Marines soon enough And he is going to be dropping down probably another supply depot to try and ensure that there isn't any sort of sneaky zergling run bys I think he does go for the barracks, and yeah, the barracks will prevent the run by this. Uh, this bunker is going to be the uh, the real um, run by killer, doing the damage that it has to. And this ACV is going to be trying to spot what he can, and he does see that there is an expansion here, and it's just freshly saturated. So you can also see that the creep is still spreading, meaning that that it's a new one, and that means that he might be a little bit of a little bit ahead. If we look at the income tab, you can see that it does show what I keep making up these numbers, guys. I'm so sorry. Once again, it shows that Nave is in the lead. He is still in control. I think that's just because of this base's saturation being so good, and then finally saturating this base so quick, so much quicker. This base only has four, and this base only has twelve. So that means that most of his money has been going into tech at this point. He's been building a lot of buildings, and I think he does have quite a bit of a uh, open supply lead because of these, these, uh, these supply depots that he's just been dropping constantly to fill in these wall ends. 
Um, the wall end doesn't really make much of a difference because uh, this SUV is clearly still able to run backwards and forwards. These uh, these Zerklings that are moving right, moving past right of, right about here are going to be sc scouting to see if they can see any sort of um, any sort of expansions that go down, and they will be preemptively knowledgeable of that, and they will let Nave know. They'll uh, they'll whisper into his ear that uh, that there will be some sort of some sort of three base play that might be uh, might be a little bit aggressive and uh, and that Nave might need to expand a little bit sooner. He go he does have this expansion, so he's going to be one one expansion ahead of uh, McLovin, which is exactly what Zerg need to be doing. Um, typically, the Zerg units, because they die so easily to to most other tech units means that they can respawn much faster and that's exactly why you want to have a greater income than your enemy because uh, losing your units is perhaps not as uh, as detrimental as it is uh, losing as it is for for uh, perhaps a protoss or a terran lo losing his units Let me just grab another drink of water guys this uh, this game is uh, is about to get underway i think uh Around about the 8 minute mark, I think the 10 minute mark is when we're really going to be seeing some serious action because these players are just mackering up so heavily. Mm. And there we go, we do have a... We do have a uh, SCV moving down here to scout around for a bit and see if he can drop an expansion. But unfortunately he is met by a Zergling and, and the Zergling, because he does have the metabolic boost, is going to be able to take out that damage. Is going to be take out that, taking out that ACV. Excuse me, guys. Words are sometimes hard to say when you're concentrating on a lot of things at the same time. We do have a Widow Mine out. Guys, I don't know what to do with Widow Mines. I have no idea how to counter them. I've had so much trouble in the past, um, especially as a Protoss, but uh, I think as a Zerg, you might have even more trouble just because you have such large uh, ground units. So it's such a lar large group of ground units moving across them a lot of times that uh, that you find out too late and you lose an entire army of zerglings and that can be detrimental even though you're able to spawn them so quickly let's look at the units tab we can see that he does have 14 larva up at any point in the game meaning that he can have i think that's uh, 14 larva translates to about 28 zerglings and zerglings spawn so fast that um that I don't even think it's really much of a problem. He does have quite a couple of queens out. If we look at the uh, the units tab, we can see that he has four queens uh, between the three bases. So that's not too many, actually. That's uh, that's round about the, the amount that you want to be looking for. But uh, these queens are running pretty low on energy. Um, right about now, we do have some, uh, some marines moving out, and they probably want to clear out this area. Those zerglings are going to be moving away. I think they were able to see that those... Uh, that these marines are moving out so these marines are going to prevent any sort of uh, any sort of additional harassment and preventing the uh, the expansion from dropping down so he can put down an expansion anytime that he feels uh, that he that he's ready to do so he does have a couple of thaws out on the field so that means that he's going to be going for a, a very heavy mech play he does have three um, three of these factories out and they're going to be completely deadly if uh, if he can just keep producing off of them he does manage to salvage that uh, that bunker right over there. I don't think that he needs to be defending this area so tightly anymore. And he's going to be facing quite a couple of zerglings, and these zerglings are incredible. There's so many of them. Um, they might not stand a chance against these thors, but they can certainly take out marines quite easily. And they were able to clean out these marines down at the bottom here. Excuse me, while I was looking at those thors, they were just so beautiful, especially with the uh, with the level 30 skin. I think is the one that you get. Um, but there's so many Zerglings out right, out, right, out right now, and I believe that he's producing a couple of roaches, and these roaches just finish right away, and he is able to uh, to get quite a couple more larvae available. Um, some more of these roaches are moving out, and this queen is moving out there as well. Um, with the uh, these spore crawlers are just watching for uh, for any particular like drop play that might be down. We do have a baneling nest that is almost finishing the centrifugal hooks, which is going to be interesting. These uh, these zerglings are moving out and they are a deadly force to be reckoned with. He is sitting on quite a couple of minerals and uh, minerals and gas, and I think that he might be able to use them later on for some of those banelings as soon as the centrifugal hooks finishes. And I think that it just finished right now, and he is going to be using them for banelings, guys. And these uh, these zerglings are just going to be running down here to spot what they see, and they are going to get the mo the the, uh, the units mobile so while he is trying to get us around to get a, do a bit of a distraction with these roaches he is going to be running in with these bailings and a couple of roaches in as well and they're going to get perfect connection with those marines and completely takes them out but he does manage to lose this army meaning that he he might have lost a little bit more than he should have 
but it does mean that he's going to be holding him back a little bit more. He is he is not sitting on the resources required to rebuild that army as quickly as he would like to, but he's producing 30, 42 Zerglings right now, and that is going to be more than enough. 46 Zerglings, in fact, um, to defend any sort of pushes. So, um, especially with, a, with with mech units being so slow, he is ready to, uh, to reinforce as, as quickly as he would like to. And he's going to be trying to take out this expansion. You can see the movement, uh, the the... The rally point is all set to this area over here and he's moving all of his zerglings out over there and he's going to be forcing this expansion off of the ground right now our uh, terran player does seem to be trying to macro up again he does have some of these uh these hellbats and these hellbats are completely ridiculous against the zerglings because they just melt them away so easily and he's going to be forcing up forcing the lift off here and he's going to take out that scv meaning that uh he's he might be forcing the army out of position from this area moving his zerglings away again these uh, these Thor and uh, and Hellbat combos, especially with a couple of Marines mixed in, would be ridiculous. Would be doing a, a ridiculous amount of damage against these uh, against these Zerglings. And the Zerglings are going to be moving back. The creep spread at the moment is more defensive creep than uh, than aggressive creep, really. But he is spreading it as fast as he can. These uh, these Thors are going to be moving out, maybe trying to reduce this creep spread seeing that it is starting, going to be starting knocking on his door soon if he doesn't manage to clean it up and he does manage to clean it up and there he does force the scan i think the two a scan for uh two or three of those creep tumors might not be enough but he is going to be moving into this area over here and he is going to be taking out this expansion this is an, an enormous amount of damage these stores do so much damage in a short amount of time and now we're going to take out this base with relative ease but he is going to be quite aggressive with his army as well nave uh, moving in with his uh, with his Roche combo and he's getting a perfect surround and these Banelings are getting perfect hits. Look at that, he is able to melt away those Thors and that is exactly what he wants to do. He's taking out so much of those of those Thors with this uh, with this Roche surround. He did lose so many of those Banelings. Unfortunately, Banelings are units that still cost money, but if we look at the units last tab, we can see... Uh, what's that button? There we go. We can see that they are so close together, especially with the Zerg going for his fourth base at the moment, even though he lost this one. Um, he's going for an additional base, while the Terran is still playing off of two bases. So this unit's loss tab is not pr exactly accurate. If we actually look at the income, we can see that the Terran is still ahead at this point, but that's just because of this one base that's down. As soon as, uh, as, soon as that additional base is up, you can see that it's almost equal. He's still ahead a little bit because of the mules. These uh, these roaches are going to be moving out again and forcing this expansion to lift up and land again. But this time he's got widow mines protecting the base, and widow mines are completely ridiculous against uh, against the zerg, as I mentioned before. So uh, I don't think that Nave will be moving in there again soon. But he does have swarm hosts on the way. These swarm hosts are these swarm hosts are pretty much on the level of uh, of widow mines. I think they're pretty much the perfect counter because losing your your uh, your locusts that these swarm hosts do spawn. Is, uh, is not nearly as much of an issue as losing a, an army of zerglings or roaches to them. So if you could force your uh, if you could force your your locust into a position where they might be able to destroy some of these water mines, that would be perfect. Putting one in the mineral line is perhaps not a good idea because if you can get a zergling in there, um, it's able to destroy any units that are busy mining there. Um, but he is going to be walling this off with a with a couple of um, with a couple of supply depots. But that ain't a problem for Nave because Nave is not going to bother himself with that base anymore because he does know that he's going to be a base ahead and that's exactly what he wants to have. He does not, he does not need to keep this base off of the ground anymore. Or, yeah, he does not need to keep it on the ground anymore. Off of the ground? I'm confused, guys. Uh, sometimes words and logic are hard. There we go. We do have these locusts moving out and these are free units and they're going to be taking, making free hits on this Thor and they actually do an enormous amount of damage because they do benefit from the upgrade. You can see that uh, they do get the uh, the plus two um, the plus two ground armor, and uh, and they're just going to be keeping this army at bay. So uh, this ridiculous amount of swarm hosts are going to be putting out a ridiculous amount of these uh, of these gosh darn locusts, and they're just going to be taking out units. These are free hits. These are this is literally if we look at the loss tab, it it costs him nothing to lose those units. And he just keeps producing them off of this army and he wants to be a little bit aggressive with them and I don't think that that's a good idea. I think he should have kept them back a little bit because he might run into a bit of a problem now because these Thors are doing a ridiculous amount of damage. They're taking out the uh, the Locusts and they are going to be taking out the Roaches as well which was supposed to prevent them from moving out and he might take out a couple of uh, a couple of these Swarm Hosts and there's so much damage on the Swarm Host guys. I think he, he doesn't, he doesn't, oh he does manage to snipe that one off of the line 
and uh, and losing all of his locusts as well. But it doesn't. I, I I'm not sure if that was uh, really the worst engagement because um because he did so much damage to his Thors and he did so much free damage that if we look at the units last tab we can see that it's only 2,000 behind and he does have the 2,000 minerals to spare so it's really not a problem at this point. If we look at uh, the vision at this point we can see that uh, between these two players one of them knows about the other one but uh, is not quite ready to attack. So we'll see. Um, this is actually an enormous amount of swarm hosts again but he's moving in with them too close and I think that might be a problem but the Zerglings might be able to hold them back. The Zergling Roach is moving in, and, the, and he is going to be doing some of, the, some of this ridiculous damage. The Widow Mines are getting some of the kills that they need to, but because of that two, uh, the two armor upgrade, this means that the free hits are, might be able to do the damage that they, that they need to. He's, getting, he's putting down the scan, and he might get quite a couple of hits on these, uh, on these Swarm Hosts. He might actually lose these Swarm Hosts, guys, and no, he does manage to get them away. They do move a little bit quicker than the Thors, and he does sink them down again just so he can drop another couple of, uh, of Locust Eggs, and he does move them back, and he is able to do some more ridiculous damage, some free damage. That he's going to be able to do some of these locusts are coming from the top here that means that he does have more swarm hosts on the way and more locusts this is exactly what he needs to do against this this uh, heavy mech play because uh, because these mech units are so slow they can't move away from those from those locusts fast enough and they might not be able to do the damage fast enough at the same time we do have this army rebuilding and we have even more swarm hosts on the field let's actually look at how many how many swarm hosts we have we have 21 swarm hosts guys that is too many swarm hosts. I have no idea what to do with that many swarm hosts. And there we go. We have some uh, some locusts moving in. And these uh, these widow mines are exactly what he wants to put down over here. Some of these guys are getting a decent amount of kills, um, and they might be they might just be killing the uh, the locusts, which is exactly what we want to do. And we are going to lose two swarm hosts. I'm not exactly sure why he wanted to lose them, but uh, these locusts are going to be doing some damage. Again, this, these free hits are exactly what he wants to do. In the meantime, this base has 34 out of 24 saturation. That means that this base is almost mined out, and this base is completely mined out. Some of his SCVs just standing around. These locusts are moving in; they looming uh, onto his uh, onto his base, and he's running out of minerals and uh, and gas. So that means that he's not going to be able to reinforce his army quite as heavily. And if we look at the uh, the army tab. We can see that uh, it is favoring Nave at the moment. He's a, he's about 20 supply ahead. Um, the worker supply is about equal, but uh, it doesn't matter because uh, for every for every single swarm host that he has, he gets two locusts up, and he does have these zerglings to to reinforce them. But it, while, all the while, he is losing his thors, and he might be losing a couple of units to these nave, might be losing a couple of units to those uh, to those to those widow mines. But that's just not going to be enough. He does have a battle cruiser up, and a battle cruiser might have been at the perfect choice against this army, but it might just be too little too late because if we look at these <laughs> this enormous amount of swarm hosts, these swarm hosts are going to be taking take out this base, taking out this uh, this army, and the zerglings are going to be taking the hits as well. Uh, this battle cruiser is doing a, a little bit of damage to these swarm hosts, but that's just not going to be enough. He has the ability to do all of the damage that he really needs to, and there we go. We have such a low, uh, such a low mineral count at the moment, and uh, you can see the army switch the, the army supply difference is just enormous at this point. It's just, it's really favoring Nave. And he is able to, uh, he is obviously able to reinforce this army as much as he would like to. He does have some, some locusts trying to take out the, uh, trying to take out some of the command centers that he has over here. And there we go, we have the quit by McLevin, not even the GG. Um, because even though he has the uh, the battle cruiser up, the battle cruiser is not near, is not going to be going to be doing nearly enough damage to prevent Nave from moving in and taking this base, completely destroying his income. Because this uh, this income has now zeroed out completely. He's not able to take this expansion because of just the the Zerg mobility that you have, and then uh, and then at the same time, Nave has expanded an additional time, making that making it so that he's on a fifth base right now while uh, while McLovin is still on his third and uh, and even not even a good third at that so thank you very much for watching um, please like like comment and uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more um, and have a nice day cheers